well, the human mating dance, right, is a very complicated thing, right? Yeah, you fire know, though. It, it's a it's a it's a complicated dance between. Um, it's all about obviously. It's about two things really. It's about possibility and it's about negotiating power, right? Mm. And there's been a lot of beautiful writings about this that you know when you like think about objectifying somebody or that let's say them objectifying you, mm. right? When objectifying someone is you want them. Right, you desire them, but you don't need them for anything. You don't need them to pay your rent. You don't need them for emotional support. You don't need to be held. You don't need any of that. The, the closer you get to somebody, you form a real emotional bond. Yeah. The harder it is to objectify them. They're no longer just an object. You're no longer just an object to them. So the the human mating dance is one of at first objectification. Yeah. Anyone who argues different has yeah. uh, is probably not of our species. And then slowly over time, less and less objectification and more emotional dependence. But don't you think that you still need to objectify a little? So absolutely, in all of the For literature, them. like the, the person who's most commonly- um, I like being so objectified too a little bit. Yeah, and I think some people do and some people don't. I think that a lot of, there's a great book, it's got a terrible title, uh, in my opinion, um, but the, the book is called Can Love Last? It's written by a very serious psychologist that talks about this, that sexual attraction is, is uh, the thing of objectification. But then as you enter into relationship, you lose that. And so a lot of times people will have affairs. People will start looking at pornography excessively instead yeah. of their person. So a lot of the, um, it, they give a really incredible example of how relationships can continue a long periods of time with a lot of excitement, like sexual excitement, but also healthy attachment yeah. by cycling in and out of objectification, yeah. attachment, objectification, attachment. You know, it's, it's tricky, right? Because everyone loves the, when you get to the point in a relationship where you just, just hang out, you just watch movies and stuff, yeah. but then, you know, if, you, if you're not actually objectifying each other every once in a while, you need to. it can go really flat. 100%. And then we always hear like, oh, you know, after 20 years, they're no longer together. Or you see celebrity couples where one or both are like super attractive and you're yes. like, he cheated on her? Yeah. Well, how could that possibly be? It's because the world objectified her but at some point they hit the kind of best friends mode, you know? Mm. And I so think- how that, do you stop that? Well, there's, okay, so there's a chemical version of all this that has to do with kids. And this, there are really cool data on this in humans. There's a hormone called prolactin. Mm -hmm. It's involved in milk let down for um, nursing. You know, when mothers nurse, you know, they're, but it's also released in men and women when they have kids. And it literally suppresses sexual desire and emphasizes laying down a body fat, making you more still. It's all there to direct your energy towards raising children. So the dad children. bod is like a The dad bod is a thing. physiological thing. I and, did that but, before I had kids. But <laughs> it, it, and, and it happens before. <laughs> yeah. It, it's I'm in, nesting. What people, th you see this in birds, you see this in humans. What people think <laughs> is that it's laying down of fat stores in order to anticipate the long nights yes. of no sleep. And when oh, you're, pr you got to prioritize, shit. listen, our species is fundamentally about making more of ourselves yeah. and, and protecting our young.